Hey, hello everybody, welcome back to SC Aviation. Today I'm going to show you what each of these six panels on the forward panel of the aircraft show. This is the 737-800. We are in London Heathrow. And so let's start. First I'm going to power up the aircraft with the AP, with the batter, battery. And the standby power, but to not run on the battery only, we're going to turn on the ground power switch. So we're now running on ground power, and that ground power is charging the battery. Okay, so the first panel that you encounter here is the PFD. It stands for Primarily Flight Display. It shows your speed, your attitude, your bank, and your all and your altitude, more or less. Remember, attitude is different than altitude. So let's start from left to right. In the left part, you can see the indicated airspeed. There are four types of airspeed. Indicated airspeed, calibrated airspeed, true airspeed, and ground speed. Your indicated airspeed is the exact airspeed that this little tube here, it's called the pitot tube, in the front part of the airplane, is sensing. What that pitot tube senses is your indicated airspeed. The calibrated airspeed is very close to the indicated airspeed but is corrected for position errors. What does position error means? For example, if the airplane is in a determinated bank or attitude, for example a very high attitude, the pitot tube, this little thing right here in the front part of the airplane, could show a speed that is higher than what is actually flowing over the wings. This is very very um, little Usually the differences are only one or two knots, so they are almost the same. But the indicator airspeed is the one that you see here in your PFD. The little magenta uh, geometric shape stands for your speed. So the autopilot airspeed can be moved with it. When you turn on the flight director, you can change it. And so sorry yeah now if I move it up or down you can see that the little knob moves as well as these numbers right here so if I said that I want to maintain 200 knots it's going to appear 200 and the little geometric shape will be shape will be placed in the 200 so you cannot see the 200 here so that's why you cannot see the shape then you have the attitude indicator which is right here this one shows attitude and bank so each space between the lines represents 2.5 degrees so 2.5 5 7.5 10 and so on of pitch attitude the lines that are on the top left and right parts uh, stand for bank so the first one is 10 second one is 20 then you have 30 and you have 45 and then 60 you usually don't use more than 30 and the little triangle that you see there right here in the middle of this screen is what shows exactly where the airplane is because if that triangle didn't exist it would be very difficult to determine it for example if you were on 30 degrees of bank or, f or 28 for example so that gives exactness the little green letters indicate in which autopilot mode you are so in this case we are on the flight directors but the autopilot is not on as soon as I turn on the autopilot let's say turn it on in no let's first just turn it on you can see that it says command so the autopilot is on but it doesn't know what to do so in the airplane you have to control three axes in terms of speed altitude and heading so here are them in the left one you have speed this is heading and this is altitude so if we wanted to maintain a certain speed we'll just arm and select speed and so what is going to happen now is that wait the trust mo the trust levers are moving let's just disconnect that but if we did turn it on you can see in the PFD that it says MCP speed so you are maintaining that's turning off again the speed that says the MCP next one 
you have heading select so now you are on heading select mode this one could be heading select or lateral navigation which is LNAV LNAV stands for lateral navigation which is what you set here in your FMC why is it in white and not in green such as with setting heading select because we don't have anything input in the FMC so if we had something input the LNAV would be in green and why do they appear like this because that means that we are on heading select but as soon as it detects some LNAV activity it will change to LNAV that's usually used with this other one which is approach mode what that is going to do is that you're keeping heading select until the aircraft intercepts the localizer for the runway and let's go to our last one which can be set to altitude which is the first one it stands for altitude hold vertical speed which will make you climb or descend just like you want then you have vertical navigation but again we don't have anything set and last but not least level change but what level change does is that it combines speed with climb so that you climb as much as you can maintaining a speed and well that's the PFD and the last one right here sorry I forgot is this little like velocimeter it doesn't have to do anything with velocimeter is the angle of attack of the airplane it's what it's going to indicate you where you stall so if that angle exceeds 40 correction 14 degrees for example in this airplane it stalls and at the right part you have the altitude in this case you can change that altitude with your altimeter because that altitude it's not based on GPS or anything it's just regarding the pressure that the aircraft is sensing so you have to calibrate it because if there is more pressure where there shouldn't be you have to calibrate it so that it tells so that it tells the real elevation and just like in the speed selector you can move the altitude maintaining switch look at the PFD please while I'll move this and you can see that it's meant it's moving so 100 200 300 400 and the down part is of course the altimeter setting so you can move it with this one to inches or with this one to hectopascals but you also can set standard and at the most right part if you is your vertical speed indicator and this one can also be controlled with the magenta so if I set vertical speed to zero you can see that the magenta thing is right on zero now if I move it to 1000 you can see that it has now moved on the vertical to the little one it's 1k so 1000 and that's it uh, apart from in the bottom part where you have a little compass that indicates magnetic or true heading remember magnetic is not true because magnetic is based on the earth magnetic field while true is based on the coordinates so there you have it next we have our navigation display you see here in the top part is the ground speed and true air speed so those were the ones I wanted to explain true air speed is usually the same as ground speed but ground speed can change if there is wind for example so true air speed is how fast you're moving through the air mass so take a of air and how fast you're moving from it is your true air speed why is it different to the indicated air speed it's very easy the indicator speed is just what the pitot to be sensing but it's not necessarily what how fast you're moving through the air mass it's pretty difficult to understand so if you want to get into more detail there are plenty of videos on YouTube for that they are very very good on tour speed and ground speed I think is the easiest one because it's very easy if there were fast enough winds for us to make this airplane lift we could lift just like a helicopter because we had because we'd have enough airspeed to lift but our ground speed would be zero because we won't be moving to the ground a way of understanding it is like this imagine you're in an airport and you get on board those things that are in the floor in which you can move faster if you stand on them you will be moving without walking but you will be moving now if you apart from that also walk you will be moving twice as fast and that's more or less what happens when you are flying with the turbines and apart from that you have wind so you fly even faster 
Then you have this little compass, it's very easy, you can see that it has the degrees. You just add a zero to the right, so 60 degrees, 90 degrees, and it says track or magnetic. Track or heading and magnetic are true. So in this case, we are, uh, fall, we are indicating a track. Track means what you are flying to, but not necessarily when the, where the nose is pointing. So here we are indicating the track and in magnetic. It could be track in true heading, in true, in true indications, so not using the magnetic field. And also it could be heading, when it's heading it's going to indicate the nose position. So it's easy, if there are no winds, track is going to match nose, because the airplane is going to fly straight to where the nose is pointing. But if there was wind and you had to crap down to the runway, we're going to make a video on how to do a crosswind landing, then the heading would be different than the track you're following. And of course it can be true regarding the, coordinate, the coordinates or magnetic. Next here on the top part, this is to the FMC, it tells you your next waypoint and how many times, time, how much time you're going to require to get to it. So for example, we have nothing set in our FMC, so it's zero minutes and zero nautical miles. But yeah, it shows minute and minutes and nautical miles. And then here, these blue things indicate what's going to appear on the navigation panel. You can change them with these bottoms here. Now, in the sim, it doesn't work, sadly. But in the real aircraft, it can show weather, airport, waypoint, station, and a lot of things. Then you have this one, which is your standby uh, PFD. It's just like this one, this big one, but it uses analog. So if you have an electric failure, like this, it would, sorry, it, I let me see if I can disconnect the power for a while. No, I cannot, that's not simulator here. So if you had an electric failure, it would still work. Then you have the, this panel, with each the engine panel, you can see mainly these things. Your true outside at eight outside air temperature, which is 15 degrees. The engine one and engine two indication. So in this case, oil filter bypass valve are open and low oil pressure is there. So basically those are more specific indications. Then you have your N1, which is related to this part of the engine, just the one that you can see. Oh, this guy is crazy. What is he doing? Well, who knows? And uh, after you have your exhaust gas temperature, then goes fuel flow, then goes your fuel quantity, and the one that it's on each tank, and the total, remember, it's in pounds times 1000. And then you have the N2, which is more inside the engine. Again, fuel flow, oil pressure, oil temperature, oil quantity, and VIB, I have no idea what it means, actually, but I think it's vibrations. So, for you to understand, let's do something. Let's start the APU, real quick here, and also start both engines. You never should start both engines at the same time, but we're going to do it here for, for training purposes. Let's at least turn on the anti-collision light so if there's any ground crew they know. So you can see here that when the engine starts, N N2 starts spooling up. Then you can see that when it reaches 25, fuel flow is going to activate. And there it goes. And it ignites. And then the little switch is cut off, just like you saw. And everything starts to pull up. So N1 starts, exhaust gas temperature starts, fuel flow, and you get all the indications. You could do this, and you see that they go down. Do this, and you see that they pull up. Well, that's it. So for the moment, let's just shut them down and show the LPU also. Okay, 
and these other two do the same but opposite so that's the forward panel guys thank you very much for your time I hope you all enjoyed this is the explanation of the forward panel you see PFD navigation panel engine navigation and again PFD this is called your upper and lower if I'm not mistaken they are called MFD so multi multi I think it's multitask something and so that's it thank you very much for your time I hope you learned something here what I explained was completely uh, true it is, represents what their what the real life does but of course if there is any mistakes regarding what is actually showing it's because of the sim okay but that's more or less what how the how the real aircraft works of course in the real one you also have more things and you can change them but here's what you have also whenever you heard that I say I think so that means that what I'm saying is that I'm not sure and think I said I don't think I think uh, anything which I don't say I didn't say think so it's because I'm sure about it and so that's it guys thank you very much for your time remember PFD and just like a nice youtuber sets keep yourself on the blue side keep the blue side up thank you very much for your time and I'll see you next time Bye-bye.